All right, guys, so the key to advanced electrical theory is essentially just getting your head around the delta and the y circuits. So we're going to start off with the delta circuits here. We're going to put all of the equations, uh, but essentially out in the field, we're often connecting up a delta to y transformer, right? So let's go over the delta circuits first, uh, and then we'll follow this up with a video on the y circuits. So let's draw out the primary for there. So we'll just draw in our windings here. So we have, you can have three single phase transformers that make up this delta, or all three windings could be on the same core. These are going to come to a junction point at each of these different nodes right here. And for this guy, since we're building up to something that, again, looks at a delta to y, then we'll be feeding the delta and then taking off our connections from the y. So I'm going to have the, the conductors going into the delta here. So I'm going to feed this guy with line 1. Then I'm going to feed this guy with line 2. And I'm going to feed the final connection there with line 3. Okay, so for these guys, the labels here could be H1, H2, H1, H2, H1, H2 to complete our delta. Or if you just have one single three-phase transformer, then this label right here is going to be H1. This guy right here would obviously be H2. And this final connection here would be H3. So that depends on whether you have three single-phase transformers that you're connecting up to create a delta, or whether you have one three-phase transformer. Okay, so... Take a look at this circuit, and I want you to figure out whether it is either a series or a parallel connection. Why do I want you to do that? Because it makes it a lot easier later on uh, when you're trying to remember all of these equations. And if you can just simplify it down to the delta being either a series or a parallel, that's going to help you to memorize each of these coming equations. So let's take a look. We've got current that's coming along here. And the current comes along to this node right here. And at that point, you just really need to look to see whether there's one path or two paths for current to actually flow. In that case, hopefully you can see that there are two paths for current to flow. But what we're going to find is that those two currents do not happen at the same time. So this guy here for line one happens at zero degrees. The next one comes in at 120 degrees, and line 3 is going to happen at 240 degrees. So each of these sine waves are 120 degrees out of phase. So it is, a, it is similar to a parallel circuit, but it's not exactly the same as a resistive circuit, in that we do have two paths there for current to flow. So for this guy, I want you to think of this circuit as a parallel circuit. Okay, that's going to help when we throw in these voltages now. Now, if we take a look at the voltages, there's two values. There's a value on the inside and there's a value on the outside. Any value on the outside is going to be termed your line value. So this guy right here is on the outside out of our circuit. And so that's going to be our line voltage. Over here, this voltage right here, is going to be our phase voltage. Okay, so any voltage on the outside is the line value. Any voltage on the inside is going to be the phase value. So now hopefully you can see that the line voltage and the phase voltage are essentially identical for a delta circuit. So that's why we said that this was a parallel circuit, because a parallel circuit, the rule is that the voltages are the same. So you can see that this voltage right here, let me use the blue, this voltage right here from line to line is the same as this voltage from here to here. 
And then hopefully you can see that that voltage is the exact same as this voltage right here. So the line voltage and the phase voltage are identical in delta. So let's write this over here. So our V line is equal to V phase. And as long as we just remember that that's the same as a parallel connection, then we're rocking. Okay, if the voltages are all the same, then the currents must be screwed up slightly. Okay, the currents are not the same in a delta circuit. We, saw, we said here that the currents come in and they take two different paths there, right? They come in right here, and there's obviously two separate paths for current to flow in each of those rungs. So again, the value on the outside, any value on the outside is going to be our line value. Any value on the inside of the circuit is going to be our phase value. Okay, and we can see that the phase value is on each of the phases here, right? So we'd also have the phase current right here, and we'd also have the phase current right here. Okay, so the equation for the currents are that the currents are happening on each of the phases, but they're not happening at the same time. One is happening at zero degrees, the other is coming in 120 degrees later, and the next one's coming in 240 degrees, right? 120 degrees at a phase. So the equation for a delta when it comes to the line current, the line current is always greater than the phase current. And how much greater? It's greater by the factor of root three, which is essentially 1.732. Okay, so we can put here 1.732. Okay, so that's just a, a rounding off of the, the root three. Okay, if we wanted to um, look at that equation, put it into like an Ohm's law chart, then we could do this, right? We could put this I line is equal to I phase, and we're going to multiply that by root three. So now we have our voltage and our current. Now we need our power. So power in three phase is in terms of VA or volt amps. And there are two equations that we can make use of. We can do our V line times our I line. Remember the power is from up until this point, it's been voltage times current. But now we're gonna multiply our line values by root three. So if you're using the values on the outside of the circuit, you're gonna multiply them by root three or we can have this equation here, VA is equal to V phase times I phase times three. We have one, two, three different phases. This is the power that's on the phase, so we're gonna multiply our single phase power by three, okay? Let's just throw in some values to see uh, how this circuit work would work out. So our voltage here, let's just arbitrarily choose uh, 600 volts for our voltage incoming. So we've got 600 volts on the line, and if we have 600 volts on the line, that means that we're also gonna have 600 volts on the phase, because those values are identical. Okay, let's look at our currents. Say we had uh, 10 amps on the phase. So here we'll put 10 amps on the phase, and we want to find out what our line current is. Well, for that, we're going to take our 10 amps and we're going to multiply by root three. So we need to find out this line current here. Okay, so let's take our 10 amps. Come on, buddy. There we go. Uh, so we'll take our 10 amps and we're gonna multiply it by the square root. So I need to do, on my calculator, I had to do second function, square root of three. And so you can see that the, the line current here is gonna be 17.32 amps on the line. Okay, so if we follow that up and find our VA values, well, here our line voltage here is 600 volts. Our line current, we just calculated to be 
3, 2 amps. And we're going to multiply those guys by root 3. And we'll see what we got. Okay, so let's bring this guy up. There we go. Let's just move it over so we can see where we're in. So what do we got? We got 600 volts times 17.32. Uh, and then we're going to multiply that again by the square root of 3. And that gives us 17,999.47. Okay, so so that you believe me in that we can use both of these equations and they should provide us with the same values, then let's drop in our phase values now. Our phase voltage is identical at 600 volts on the phase. We're seeing that our phase current is 10 amps. And we're going to multiply those bad boys by 3. And we should find a value that's almost identical to 17,999. Okay, so let's clear this out. Uh, we have 600 volts on the phase times 10 amps on the phase. And we're going to multiply that by 3. And that gives us 18,000 VA. Okay, so you can see that these guys are exactly the same. They're off by a touch, but they're exactly the same. If we had used uh, the full value here, because this is 17.32 and then a number of different digits on the end that we cut off, then we'd be at 18,000 VA. So either one of those equations are going to work. Okay, so for this one, we've got 600 volts on the line, 600 volts on the phase, 10 amps on the phase, and we've got 17.32 amps on the line. The last thing I wanted to show you was um, when we get into looking at wattage, then this equation is still going to hold true. This one where we said power factor is equal to watts over VA. So later on, if we want to find our wattage, then we can find our total watts by taking our VA and multiplying it by our power factor, right? So VA times our power factor. Well, our VA here is V line times I line times root 3. So we're going to multiply that by our power factor. Or if we're using our phase values, we could also use this equation, V phase times I phase times 3. So our VA multiplied by our power factor, and that'll give us the amount of wattage in the circuit as well. All right, guys, that's pretty good. So we've covered uh, all of the equations for the delta. Hopefully that clears things up. Just think of the delta as a parallel. Then you'll remember that the V line and the V phase are identical. All right, click into the next video. The next video is going to cover the Y circuits.